Hey guys, it's Hink here. So today I, I have a topic that's very important. There's there's very specific warning signs that I think a lot of guys ignore that leads to them having injuries and sometimes very serious, in rare cases, even permanent injuries, especially when they're doing enlargement. So I want to talk about what those five most important warning signs are, but I also wanted to talk about what are some of those what we call red herrings, where things that like, oh my gosh, what's going on? But it's really not an injury. It's usually more of a cosmetic issue. So we're going to talk about that today. So stay tuned. And guys, these aren't any in any particular order, but I do feel like I'm going to talk about some of the more important ones first. The very first warning sign you should never ignore is pain. Pain is never normal. And I don't care what anybody says on any kind of platform or any kind of ebook or whatever it may be. Pain is never normal normal okay if you are doing this and you have any kind of pain whatsoever you stop and you stop immediately and you figure out what's causing that pain if you wake up the day after doing pe and you are in pain you're doing it wrong first of all but also you need to stop and you need to recover until your pain has gone away that is a rule that will keep you out of trouble number one pain is never normal all right guys number two is decreased erection quality meaning so guys if you hopefully have listened to my videos you you have already taken an inventory of your d and you know what's normal for you what's a normal erection quality how many times you're waking up at night with nocturnal erections the normal coloration the normal size guys all things that i've talked about in my enlargement course it's available now but that's neither here nor there but guys you should know what's normal for you so specifically as far as erection quality you should know what it's normal for you and so if you are doing PE and you used to have basically 100% erections and now it's dipped down to 85, 80%, you need to stop. You need to stop all PE and figure out what's actually causing it. It's not normal to have dips in your erection quality. Now, that being said, there are some caveats, like sometimes specifically after pumping, some guys will have decreased erection quality immediately following that, but then it recovers within about like 30 minutes to an hour. So that is something that is a little bit different. I mean, in general, if you do like PE in the morning and then you are active at night and you notice that, you know, it's not getting up like it used to, you need to stop and you need to reassess. And so guys, this next one is a such a big one that I made a whole separate video on it and that's loss of nocturnal erections. If you haven't seen my video on the importance of nocturnal erections after this video, watch it. I'll link it in the description. But guys, nocturnal erections are so important, especially when we're talking about recovering from PE and recovering from injury because it's that nocturnal blood flow that's actually what's responsible for restoring your penile health. And that's often a lot of reason why older men lose their erectile function is because as their testosterone levels drop, they do not get nocturnal erections. So guys, if you are losing your nocturnal erections, that is a very bad sign. For more information on it, please watch my entire video on it. That being said, the converse is also true. If you guys are getting good nocturnal erections, then that's a really good sign that your penis is in good health. So what's a way you can actually maximize your penile health? Guys, just simply taking citrulline at night as you can tolerate it, somewhere between three to five grams of citrulline before bed every night, it will help with the quality of your nocturnal erections and it will improve your erection quality overall and improve your penile health. And guys, that's why, of course, I made Vigor. It's what the, I mean, it's, it, it is the perfect citrulline based supplement for you to take. That's why I personally always take a scoop before bed. All right, guys, the next one is varicose veins. And so I'll have Callie put a picture of what varicose veins look like, but they're basically these big distended veins. Oftentimes you see them in people's legs, but sometimes you notice that the veins along your penis, sometimes even your scrotum can become big and dilated. Once again, guys, that's why it's so important to know what is normal for you and what is normal for your anatomy. So you're not wondering is like, oh, is that vein getting bigger? If you have that question, you can actually pull up your like picture that you have secured away wherever it may be and say, oh yeah, my vein looked like before. So you don't have to worry. Or you're like, oh man, my vein has doubled in size. That's concerning. The reason why varicose veins can be so concerning is because it could indicate that you're, indicate that you're having valve failure of your veins, meaning you're on your way to developing venous leak, okay, or basically erectile dysfunction because the veins don't appropriately seal themselves off during an erection. So it's very important to monitor for the development of varicose veins. Similarly, in the testicles, you can have varicoceles or basically distended veins in your testicles. And when you're doing things potentially like pumping or sometimes even clamping where you're restricting that venous blood flow. So it's very important that you monitor these things, guys, because they could be hard stops, meaning it's an indication that 
you just can't do any of the traditional enlargement techniques. And guys, this next one is big as well. Numbness or decreased sensitivity. Once again, guys, you should be doing tests before you get started with any kind of enlargement exercises where you take, you know, possibly even like something like a feather and maybe even something like an ink pen where you can, you know, obviously don't like write all over your D, but you can test the different sensitivity and you can see, okay, like, oh yes, I'm sensitive all the way around. I'm able to feel the feather at all of these points. Or like, you know what? Actually, the left side of my D is a little bit more numb than the right side of my D. And just so you know that that's your baseline, guys. But it's very important that you notice a baseline. But if you start developing numbness, that is a sign you are developing nerve damage. Meaning the nerves that go to your penis, especially these more distal portions, are becoming injured. If you continue to injure them long enough, you will literally develop permanent nerve damage. A lot of guys who use noose extenders, the extender with the little strap that you just like strap it on. It's a terrible idea, guys. And that's why I never recommend it and why I think it's one of the worst enlargement exercises you can do. But that can cause permanent nerve damage, numbness, and desensitization. Okay, so I strongly don't recommend that. Once again, guys, I'm not trying to plug anything, but you know, I have my shield formula. This has things like acetyl L-carnitine that's been proven to cause nerve regeneration. I'm going to make a whole video about it, guys. But if you do have numbness or you're dealing with any kind of nerve pain along the penis, you don't even have to buy it, guys. Just go to LeviathanSubs.com or Amazon. Just look at the ingredient list and you can form your own stack. You know, it's all love. Or if you want to support me, of course, you can use the stack that I've created literally to help guys dealing with penile injuries recover. All right, guys, so what are some of the red herrings? And so for those of you that you know don't know, a red herring is like something that looks suspicious, but it's really not that bad, okay? One of the first things is something that's called petechia. Petechia are these little red dots that can appear on the penis, okay? This often occur in the earlier stages of PE. Guys are just getting into it. They're a little bit too aggressive. Either hopefully they're not clamping, but either clamping or doing something like a pump at too high pressure. And the blood vessels just simply aren't used to dealing with the higher pressure. I already made a video talking about how the, basically the collagen stretch response where you should watch this, but it shows that blood vessels that aren't used to being under pressure are more prone to rupture, guys. And that's why it's so dangerous, especially in the early stages of PE, that you make sure that you're using low pressure and gradually progressively overloading and allowing, allowing those structures the time to actually recover from the stimulus that you're putting them through. But in general, guys, the red dots are usually cosmetic. Now, they can indicate you're using either too much pressure or too long of a pressure, but it's not like your D is failing or anything. You just want to dial back what you're doing. But it, that's something that I wouldn't say specifically is an injury. Next is something that's called hemosiderin staining. Guys, I already have a whole nother video on hemosiderin staining, but basically what it is is when you're using pressure either through clamping or pumping primarily, or sometimes even something like a vacuum cap, it draws the blood out into the surrounding tissue, and when the blood basically breaks down, it leaves a staining iron component, and it causes that discoloration that can look like a dark bruise. Guys, this is something that is purely cosmetic. Now, for some of you, especially depending on how light you are, this can be very jarring to see your D go from being like very light to potentially very dark, depending on how prone you are to hemosiderin staining. Once again, I made a whole video about it if you guys want to learn more about it. Now, there are treatments for it, you know, sometimes even like laser therapy or chemical peel. But the important thing is, guys, you want to wait until you're done with PE because you more the, the more you do this, the more hemocytic and staining you're going to get. So just keep that in mind. But once again, that's largely a cosmetic issue. So if you just have the hemocytic and staining, good erection quality, no numbness, no pain, you're fine. So guys, this next point is a little bit nuanced because I said pain is never normal and pain is never normal. But sometimes you can get a dull ache at the base of your penis. If you're doing especially any kind of length work where like you're literally pulling and stretching out your penis or even sometimes something like having a pump in the position where it's pressing on that suspensory ligament of the penis, it can cause tenderness there. Now, I personally, my rule is if something hurts, I don't mess with it. Like I stop PE until it doesn't hurt anymore. Okay. But having that dull ache at the base of your penis, sometimes even into your lower abs, that is something that is not particularly concerning to me. It just means that there's some strain on that basically suspensory ligament. And I'm not talking about strain the way like PERV and BD like have these scientific formulas for strain. I just mean that basically your tendon was stretched out too much to the point that it's sore. You just want to be careful, guys. Make sure that goes away. And when you're doing any kind of length work, you just want to make sure that you're gradually stretching and you're not pulling and yanking or pulling and putting it on like 
you know, 150 pounds of tension on your extender or whatever it may be or hanging for that matter. So next is going to be a lymphocele. I see this come up all the time, guys. If you are doing something where you are basically restricting blood flow to the penis, primarily, typically, honestly, it can even be with manual stretches. It can be with using an extender, so even something like a noose extender, but oftentimes with pumping or clamping, you can actually get your lymphatic channel that kind of fills up with fluid and it gets distended and it gets irritated, okay? When that happens, you can have something that's called a lymphocele develop. But guys, a lymphocele specifically is something that goes away over time. It's different than lymphangiosclerosis. I made a whole video, guys, about lymphatic issues where I break it down in detail. A lymphocele, it might pop up after a pumping, manual stretch, exercise, whatever it may be, but then it goes away. And usually somewhere, somewhere between anywhere between like 30 minutes to usually like six hours. Now, if it is still there 12 hours later, then you might be on the verge of developing something that's called sclerosing lymphangitis or lymphangiosclerosis. And basically what this means is that that lymphatic channel has become so inflamed over time that it actually starts to harden and almost scar down. Now, if you're not careful, that can become permanent. Now, why do we care about that? Once again, guys, it's mainly a cosmetic issue. If one of your lymphatic channels even gets permanently sclerosed, it's not going to affect the overall function or you know, anything meaningful about your penis, you just might have like what feels like a hard vein in that area, even though it's not a vein. But you just want to be careful because if it does become permanent, there are times where you would have to have surgery to get it removed. But once again, guys, cosmetic issue. And finally, guys, edema or swelling. So swelling is literally just when usually some sort of interstitial fluid or basically fluid in the body gets pulled out from the area it's supposed to be and deposited where it shouldn't be. So you often see people with like swollen ankles or swollen legs. That is edema, okay? And it's usually essentially lymphatic fluid. There was some kind of back and forth between me, BD, and PERV about like the semantics of the nomenclature. But I do think it's important that it's it's actually originates from the leaking capillaries due to the increased pressure or the little blood vessels like where the connections occur. I don't know if it's a unique take or what, but I don't think edema really matters that much, guys. I think you can still make gains if you develop edema, and I certainly don't think it is something that is dangerous. Now, oftentimes what it does indicate is that you're either pumping for too long of a set, meaning instead of pumping, which should be recommended somewhere between three at most seven minutes, People are pumping for somewhere between 10 to like 30 minutes or more, or it can mean that you're pumping at too high of a pressure. Now, too long or too high of a pressure could, in theory, be dangerous, but it's not going to affect your actual penile function. And so once again, edema is more of a cosmetic issue if you ask me. And, you know, you're on my channel, so you're basically asking me. But you also need to keep in mind that they just like that swollen, boggy, you know, I call it the Quasimodo D where it just comes out like deformed. If you're into that, more power to you, you know, who am I to judge? But I just don't think it's a very aesthetic thing. It can also feel very soft and squishy. So if you try to like pump super long and get this like big bloated, soft, squishy D and then try to have intercourse, it could actually be very challenging and honestly unsightly for your, you know, whoever your partner may be. All right, guys, those are the five most important things that I think as far as the warning signs and the red herrings. I appreciate you guys watching. Just remember, you are enough just as you are, but there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, guys. Now, if you want to support me, guys, my hard flaccid course is now live. If many of you guys that have actually injured yourself, of course, guys, my enlargement course is live. I actually have before and afters on my subreddit, r slash hink, where a guy gained over a half an inch in length in erect flas in a, excuse me, in erect length by doing my program, guys. And you all know that over the past three years, I've put on over an inch and a half in length and over an inch in girth by doing my program, guys. So it does work. We have our supplements available on theliathinsupps.com. That includes our new three supplements, which are Safeguard, which prevents fibrosis. Very important for guys that want to be preventative and can also, there's evidence that it can improve the chances of basically enlarging your penis actually by its work, by its anti oxidase activity. The shield formula we already talked about that's our nerve support formula that can help with nerve regeneration and also increase sensitivity and get rid of any nerve pain you might have quite honestly anywhere in your body then of course we have our horny goat weed based supplement fortitude which has natural pd5 inhibitors like viagra or like cialis it also has many different factors to maximize your libido and maximize your erection quality if you need to reach me patreon.com dochink if for any enlargement equipment you might need, peakmailphysique.com. And of course, Cali, our editor, does excellent work. If you want to support him, you can buy him a coffee. And it comes with 
20 6k wallpapers for you guys to use and so if you want to do that all the links to all those products are in the descriptions i can't thank you guys enough for watching this long appreciate you guys peace and love